Once you've built your 3D model in Revit LT, you'll likely reach a point when you want to visualize how the model will look with some degree of realism. Creating photorealistic renderings is one of the main benefits of working in 3D. Revit LT includes the Render in Cloud functionality for this purpose. With Render in Cloud, you get a high quality photorealistic render, but you don't have to tie up your local machine to do it. All of the processing is done remotely on Autodesk servers with the final rendering being delivered to your inbox when it's ready. So the first step is to have a 3D view to render. I could render this exterior of my building here, or I could choose any of the other 3D views that I have in my project. For this example, I'm going to do an interior rendering. So before you render, you should always check a few settings. First of all, I might want to turn on the shadows. Now when I do that, I see that the space gets very dark. So I want to choose a time of day or a time of year when the light is actually coming through the windows so it'll make a more interesting scene. Here on the view control bar, we also have our visual styles pop-up. And from the pop-up, we can choose online rendering option. This will open up a small dialog and there are a few settings here. And right next to sun settings is a small browse button. And that will allow me to configure the way I want the sunlight to behave in this rendering. Now, the default option is lighting, which just sets up the sun at a generic angle. What I want to do is change to a still rendering, which allows me to set my time and date and location. This allows for a more accurate rendition. Now I'm going to start with one of the presets that you see down here. I can also copy and duplicate and create my own presets if I like. But I'll start with the summer solstice and I'm going to click apply. And you can see that a small bit of sunlight is now coming in through the windows. So that might make an interesting rendering. But let's see what happens if I choose some of the other settings like the winter solstice. Well now when you apply you'll see that the sun is streaming in through the windows, and I'm pretty sure that that'll make a much more interesting rendering. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK with that, and OK again to accept those changes. Now the next thing that I might want to look at is the material assignments. When you build your model, you can apply actual materials to the elements in your model. Ma materials determine an element's overall display characteristics in both rendered and non-rendered views. And this floor here, you can see, is currently just a simple, smooth finish. So I'm going to select that floor, go to Edit Type, and Edit Its Structure. Now here in the Material column, you can see that there really isn't a material currently assigned to it. It's just listed as by category. So let's go ahead and click in there and click the small little Browse button. That will load up the Material Browser. Now what you can see here is I have all sorts of materials to choose from. I could choose carpeting or tile. So I'm going to choose the wood finish. And you can see that that applies a texture to the surface, which is actually repeating this photograph of a wood flooring pattern here. And you can see that the material has been applied to the surface of the floor object. Revit LT offers a simple material editor. However, the materials used are the actual Autodesk materials, the same ones used in the full versions of Revit and other products like Showcase and 3ds Max. This means that you can make your material selections in Revit LT and then share the model with others using one of those products and they will already have the desired material assignments. So we're now ready to go on to our cloud render. But to do that, I'm going to go to the View tab and locate my Render in Cloud button. Now you'll need an Autodesk 360 account for this. I've already logged in, so I'll go ahead and click Continue. Now on this screen, we can choose which view we want. You can see it's already suggesting the view that we're currently in, but I could add additional views if I wanted to render more than one image. I can choose uh, my output type from either a still or an interactive panorama. I'll go with a still image. Choose your level of quality from draft all the way to best. I'll go with high quality this time, but bear in mind that the higher the quality, the longer it takes for the rendering to generate. Likewise with size, you can make a really small rendering or a very large rendering. And the larger that you choose, the longer it will take for the rendering to generate. So I'll just go with the medium one in this case. I'll stick with the advanced exposure and I like the PNG file format. Finally, we can ask Autodesk 360 to email us when the rendering is done. This way we can continue working in Revit LT and simply be alerted when our rendering is ready. I'll go ahead and click Start Rendering. And then I can click Continue in Background so I can keep working. Once the email arrives, I can go look for my rendering in the online render gallery. That will load up my Autodesk 360 account and take me to the render gallery screen where I can see any previous renderings I've generated as well as the current one. And here's the space that we just rendered. If you're satisfied with the rendering, you can download the image with a right click or you can adjust the exposure or try generating a whole new rendering maybe at a different time of day. 